All right. So again, we're talking about chakras. Do not forget that uh, you can share this private Facebook group with others so that they can see the videos that we've recorded over here for a long time. We've got uh, probably 25 or maybe 28 videos now so they can see all kinds of information and ideas on using the Wave Watch. And again, you direct them to our private Facebook group, Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics. And then don't forget the website is wavewatch.com. So you please uh, join and share all that you can about the Wave Watch. I really appreciate it. As always, I've got a few things to go over and it changes from time to time. But today I wanted to uh, just remind you of the Wave Watch disclaimer. Uh, the Wave Watch is an acoustical frequency product and there are 850 frequencies for self-care. And it's not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, prevent any, any diseases or medical conditions. We absolutely can't say that. Uh, it's not a licensed medical product and all acoustical frequencies are considered experimental. It's not FDA approved. It's not a registered medical device because it's sound. It's sound that we hear every day. Um, the FDA, we don't think that they need to be con in control of the sound that we hear every day. Uh, any testimonies are strictly volunteer. No one has been reimbursed for their testimony. And once in a while, you'll see some words that are very specific. They sound like a medical diagnosis. And we are using those words only in its relationship to the frequencies that we've created. It, we are not making the medical diagnosis. It's just a way to identify that easier instead of saying X, Y, Z, B wording, you know, so it makes sense. So that's a disclaimer. And then we're going to hop right into chakras. Um, basically, you'll see this type of a setting position a lot of time when we talk about chakras. And they're based on majorly seven uh, chakras, which are considered uh, centers of energy. And we're talking about emotional, physical, and spiritual issues that do connect back to the chakras. Now, there's many other chakras and other systems, and I think I saw somewhere there were 144 chakras. I am not an expert. I should have said that earlier. I'm learning about chakras. I do use them, but that doesn't mean I've been trained classically. And so if you're interested in chakras, you know, go to a class. Uh, go to uh, look on the internet, uh, buy some books, uh, teach yourself a little bit more, learn more on your own, or reach out to others who are educated and teaching classes. So it is a fascinating concept. And what I did learn, you know, uh, I think most of us know that uh, chakras are uh, Indian. Uh, they're from uh, Vedic texts uh, from about 1500 to 500 uh, BC. And um, they really correspond to energy wheels, energy centers in our body. And they're spinning energy and they correspond to different things up and down our spine, you know, all over our back. So nerve bundles, major organs are all connected with certain energy centers. So that makes it common sense when you think about it. Now, what I was kind of surprised about was that, um, the chakras were introduced more to the Western world in the 1920s, kind of with a negative connotation on it. So sometimes I still have people who are very negative about chakras. And I'm just here to tell you that chakras are just a measurement of energy and how those energies affect our body. So uh, it wasn't until 1977, maybe, that there was more light shed on this. And uh, somebody named Christopher Hills um, gave us more information and connected science to chakras, saying that the DNA and the endocrine systems were connected. And he was also the one that connected the light frequencies and the colors of the rainbow to chakra colors. I guess that wasn't an original idea. So, you know, Westerners, we change everything. We kind of make it our own. We do redo it. So here's somebody who's adding the colors and the ideas of the rainbow to the chakra colors. So I thought that was kind of interesting. And I was able to find a, uh, you know, just a diagram that shows the different chakra colors. 
and they're all over in different things that you can buy now. I recently bought a pendulum and it had uh, the, the major stone was a, a clear crystal. And then uh, there were the smaller chakra stones uh, going up the uh, pendulum chain. So I was really thrilled with that. And so I use that daily, it's kind of interesting. Now, how can we balance a chakra? This is what we have been doing up until now. You can go to classes for yoga postures. Uh, you can learn breathing practices to increase the flow of energy. And you can do some meditation to bring out clarity of mind. So these have all been things and classes you could go to and things that you could learn about balancing your chakras. But of course, I'm here to tell you today that the Wave Watch has chakras on them also. So that's the fun information for me to get to share with you today. So here's an image of the chakras, the seven major ones. We're also gonna be talking about two extra ones, the soul star and the earth star. And so these chakras um, basically are lined up as you go up and down your spinal area. And so now, I, you know, I'm not that interested in doing a lot of yoga work anymore and I'm sure I should. <laughs> I don't get my breathing exercises done as much as I should, you know, and maybe I'm not getting meditation done, but I can certainly wear my wave watch and punch a button at any time during the day and balance a chakra if I think it's out of position or, uh, you know, I'm having some trouble with it. So, of course, we want to get educated just a little bit on what those chakras connect to and that's why it's really common sense when you think about it. Now, this is the first time that I've ever really shared a frequency with you that is on the wave watch. And that's because this is easy. The chakras are considered one frequency. So I have them listed. These are the frequencies that are playing on the wave watch when you select one of those. But you might not know uh, that is playing that and it doesn't make any difference. And this is where I think it's so fascinating that uh, no matter what country you're in or if you're using something, some type of idea to uh, tune your body or you're using singing, the Tibetan singing bowls or crystal bowls or, uh, you know, some, the dirigidus uh, from Australia, everything is making a specific sound. And every culture has kind of figured out that it's the same sound to take care of the same problems or the same organ systems. So no matter what we've named it, it all comes down to the same frequency. So um, we're going to share just a little bit more information about that. Now, again, the reason I haven't shared this before, and it really doesn't make any difference, but like when I have a frequency for, say, a headache, um, it has probably 30 frequencies inside that frequency set. And the chakras are one of the few that only have one frequency set. And so if you're uh, trying to listen to the chakra, you're not going to hear it very easily because it's only one frequency and I'm a deaf person. So I have a really, really hard time hearing it. Even if I put it, you know, up to my wrist this way, I guess you'd say from my wrist uh, up to my ear, I can't necessarily hear that, but rest assured that your body is feeling that it's being absorbed because I have lots of testimonies of people saying, Oh my gosh, I get so much relief. And I know just the other day I was having trouble with the, uh, uh, sleep, I think, and I played the uh, root one for insomnia, you know, and I was really uh, pleasantly uh, amazed about that one. So um, these basic chakras, again, are a representation of a specific frequency that could be the same in many, many different healing, sound healing modalities throughout the world. So uh, I think this is really interesting for us to add this into our repertoire so that we can have a different, uh, easier, more relaxed healing mode because we're all in the same spot. We all want to, I, I guess maybe I jumped to that conclusion 
but we all probably want to use less medication. We don't want to be in pain. We want to have control of our bodies more and we want things to happen a little bit quicker. So that's the hope on the Wave Watch, the frequencies for chakras so that you may not have time to do your yoga pose, or you may not be in a position to do that, but you might know that such and such chakra is out of balance and it is affecting your health or your emotions or your spirits so that you can play it very easily on the wave watch. And then you, when you're in a better position, yes, do your deep breathing, do your meditation, do your yoga poses, and hopefully you'll take some classes to learn some of those if you need to. So I want to make sure uh, that you know how to make a um, playlist for playlist two and three, because I did see a problem that I guess I created when I put 850 frequencies on the wave watch. When they came up for the chakras, it alphabetized them. And that's not necessarily how we want to play them. We want to play them from the bottom up because like the earth star chakra is, you know, eight to 10 inches from our body uh, beneath it. And it's our grounding chakra. So we've got to be grounded before anything else can work up through our body. So because they're alphabetical, that may not be the best way to have them on the wave watch and I apologize. So uh, you have an easy fix. You can simply make your own playlist, playlist two or three or one if you want, and just put them in alphabetic, or excuse me, take them out of alphabetical order on the playlist and put them like they are mentioned here. So you would start with the earth star, then you would go uh, add the root one in, sacral, solar plexus, heart, and go up the list like we're mentioning here. And again, they're alphabetical on the watch. And it's not saying that it would work. It, it's not necessarily bad, but it's going to work a lot better if it is in the format where you're playing from the bottom up, starting with the Earth Star. So here's a little video on how to set um, the wave watch. And I taped this earlier, so I'm talking about a few different things. But I think you'll get the gist of making sure that you know how to set playlists two and three if you haven't done that yet. Now let's say that we have somebody who we want now, let's to make say that a we have somebody who we want to make a We'll try that again. That was echoing. Now let's say that we have somebody who we want to make a second playlist for, maybe a husband and wife, or maybe you're uh, sharing this uh, watch with somebody who's in assisted living like my mom and can't do it herself. So we might want a playlist made and all ready to go. So basically what we're gonna do is a little bit different. We're going to find the particular idea that we want. And I'll show you this again with maybe just a little bit different idea. So if we wanted to go to uh, chronic, we could go down to chronic fatigue and we could touch that one. Now this is a little bit different right here. Instead of putting it in the heart folder, you have to touch the menu bar. And then you very carefully go down. This one just goes one at a time and you'll see add to playlist. So you'll touch add to playlist and then you'll see your three playlists there. So we're gonna add this to playlist number two. And when I touch that, it opens up and it says chronic fatigue, yes or no. So you're gonna to touch yes, and it's now gives you a signal it's added to playlist number two. Now, if I want to remove this, I have to touch, go down one arrow, and it will give me a choice of which playlist. And then it will say remove from playlist, yes. So that's a pretty easy one there. Now, if you wanna add it to playlist three, not too hard now, you're gonna add that to playlist number three. If you wanna take it out, you're gonna remove from the playlist right in those particular areas. So playlist two and three go through the home screen and you arrow down to add to playlist or remove from playlist. Hope that helps you.
So I hope that does help you. I didn't realize I had such a slang there on that one <laughs> when I made that recording. So anyway, uh, we're gonna start with chakras a little bit and uh, tell you just a little about them. I didn't think I had enough time to tell you uh, all of the spiritual and emotional uh, ideas connected to chakras. That might be something we talk about later. So today I'm just gonna be talking about mostly the uh, some of the problems physically that are connected. And it just makes so much common sense for us. So again, I already mentioned that the Earth star is the grounding point, and that really connects us to our planet and the universe. How could we not be saying that today? It's an amazing universe out there. So uh, just a you know, a little paragraph at the top, our lives today are very hectic. We're ungrounded. Think of everything that's been going on. So the Earth star is a really important one to use to maybe get us grounded a little bit better. I know when I watch too many uh, programs on TV, I really get ungrounded. So that's a good one for me to watch or maybe some of you also. Um, so just in general, um, we tend to lose our balance a little bit more when uh, the Earth star is out of balance. Uh, vertical problems. We might have some eating disorders. We might have physical problems in our legs and our hips, our feet, pelvic, uh, knees and ankles. So again, think about grounding. If you just remember that word, the earth star is grounding. You're touching the earth and then circulation problems. So sometimes I forget to mention that. Somebody says, well, what can I do for circulation? And I'll say, well, I've got a circulation code. You know, and I don't think about the chakras. I just can't, um, as I say a lot, I just can't rattle them off. You know, they just don't come to mind fast enough if I say that correctly and tease myself. So circulation problems could be something that could be added through the chakras and worked on through that. So give me some feedback if anybody has some uh, expertise or experience with that. So the next one is the uh, signs of the blocked uh, root or uh, uh, unbalanced uh, root chakra. And I'm not sure if I've mentioned already, but it wasn't until the 1970s that the colors were added to the chakras. This wasn't something that's uh, ancient uh, and written up in the text and things like that. So this is, you know, a little bit more new information. And I know I'm said, I've said it already, but Westerners tend to add things, change things so that it makes a little bit more sense to us. So anyway, there's a symbol that has been used and then the colors uh, that we're gonna see a, a little bit later also in some different ways. But um, we've also seen uh, or can really think about when we have the root blocked that we may have some digestive disorders. It's a little bit more intense, a little bit more keyed in than with the earth star. So we might be depressed. Uh, we might not be able to know where what's going on or what we want to do. We might be disconnected and isolated. We might have panic attacks. But mostly health-wise, physical, we might have some digestive problems. We might have colon, bladder, and lower back. And it makes so much sense just from the diagram of where the root chakra is. So if you're having something in that area, play that root chakra. Uh, unexplained aches and pains in the body, reproductive, that's the area that we're talking about, the root chakra. And then again, insomnia, which I mentioned. Now, I really got this list. It was just a cut and paste, and I want to make sure that I give credit at the bottom of this slides. All of these slides are from uh, basically um, from um, uh, chakras, introduction, energy uh, centers effect. And I'll try to post that on the uh, website also on the Wave Watch Frequency Fanatics when I get done with this, because it's a really good slide and a place to go for education from somebody who has truly been trained in it and who lives that life and is from India or, you know, that kind of thing. So lots more information. I'm just giving you a very small overview in how we can connect this back to a wave watch. So another area is the uh, sacral chakra. And uh, basically the color is orange. They talk about the element being water. And again, new additions, but basically we're talking about just moving up just a little bit we're gonna have some, maybe some lower back pain, some arthritis, 
some sexual problems, hip issues, anemia, joint problems, low energy, spleen, kidney issues, and premenstrual syndrome. And I know you can read those just as good as I can, but maybe for somebody who's listening along, uh, that might be something that, that I could uh, share with you, even though you might be reading too. But these are you know, chakras, the sacral chakra that is unbalanced. Those could be some symptoms. And again, this isn't talking very much about the emotional symptoms or the spiritual but just mostly some of the physical ones. And that's what most of us are really working on at this point is to get our bodies feeling better. Another one, just moving up one spinning disc. Remember that's what they're called is a spinning disc, uh, solar plexus. And so digestive, constipation, irritable bowel syndrome, eating disorders, ulcers, diabetes, issues with the pancreas, liver problems, colon problems, uh, improper processing of nutrients makes perfect sense. So if we just put this in our mind a little bit differently, because some of these words might be just a little bit different for us, um, doesn't mean that it's not right. It just means that we need to identify and connect those areas in our body. Remember, again, it doesn't matter which culture has worked on something, they've all kind of come up with the same frequencies, help the same body part. We just have different labels for these frequencies. So we need to make sure that um, we get those uh, frequencies as easily as we can in our system. And that's by using the Wave Watch. Again, you may not have time to you know, think about, oh, I could do some exercises and I, I, you know, I'm at a conference, but when can I do that? You could be listening at a conference and playing your wave watch and no one would know the difference. So easy to do. Now the heart chakra, I think that's an easy one. There's a couple of, you know, I had some, just some real simple ideas for emotions. Uh, we, we're, we fear, we're fearful of rejection. We're losing trust in a relationship. We have issues with giving and receiving affection. We're over-dependent maybe in a relationship and maybe we're distancing ourselves from people. Uh, we, we wanna, we're trying to appear tough when actually we're really vulnerable. And that makes perfect sense. That's heart problems. We can all relate to that. So if you're anywhere in that cycle or that scheme, the heart chakra is an easy one to play. Uh, if you're looking physical, thinking physical, we've got heart palpitations, poor blood circulation, heart pain, angina, and problems like asthma could all be connected to that heart chakra. So really huge to um, think about those ideas and play some of the chakras through when you have a corresponding possibility of a problem. I also like the throat chakra a lot. And I think uh, several women have really keyed right in on that. So when, you know, when it's our throat, we, we can't express ourselves. I mean, it just makes perfect sense. So use it. We can't describe what we wanna say. Uh, we're being misunderstood by people. We're not getting our, you know, our emotions out or our feelings or the words that we wanna say out. We're talking about your throat chakra. Um, some people might go into being very aggressive and use negative words and actions because they're not being heard. Again, common sense. We just need to relate back to it and access the throat chakra. Uh, physical, we might have a sore throat. We might have hormone problems. Think about the thyroid and so many hormone problems of, uh, approach to that and pain or stiffness in the neck area. And I, um, I'm i sorry, I didn't see uh, thyroid. I, mean, I don't think I uh, got it in there. I don't know if I missed it. I, Like I said, I got all these from the one main meds website that I did give credit to, but I, the thyroid should definitely be included in there. So again, if you have thyroid problems, you can play the throat chakra. Now we're going up. The next one is the third eye. And so sometimes this, this uh, labeling is a little bit confusing for people, but really 
not. It's not that confusing. Maybe it's just a different wording we hadn't thought about, but it's talking about eye problems. It's talking about headaches. It's talking about migraines, brain disorders, endocrine problems, insomnia, pituitary and hypothalamus gland problems. It makes perfect sense. So if you think about it right through here, anything that's going on in your brain can be connected with your third eye. So what I think is very interesting is I have frequencies for headache and I have frequencies for migraines and the frequency, the one frequency that connects that I showed you the chart with the exact frequencies from the chakras. These are included in the headache one and in the migraine one, but there might be 25 other frequencies in there that have been measured also. So the third eye chakra is one frequency and it could possibly work for your headache and for your migraine or vice versa. You could go to the specific headache, the specific uh, migraine folders where there's a few more. And I don't remember if I've already said this, don't forget that because these are one frequency only, you're gonna have a hard time hearing them. And so you would just, it's on your wave watch, you turn it on, your body's going to absorb it. One uh, cell is gonna vibrate, the next one's gonna vibrate, the next one. And then it's just gonna zip through your body. And I always say from my research, 4.3 times the speed of sound. So it's very important that you realize that there are different ways and different things to access um, different uh, health problems. And again, it doesn't matter which culture it came from. Now, another one and the last one or next to the last one is the crown chakra. So people are having problems with coordination, more tension, headaches, exhaustion. Um, this one I even found underactive and overactive symptoms. Uh, again, think of our life today, very confusing. <laughs> so underactive symptoms of the crown chakra could be confusion, you know, lack of inspiration. You just want to lay around and sleep all the time. Wow. I think there's a lot of that going on today. Overactive would be, you know, pretty cynical, you know, or apathetic. Um, it even says spiritual addiction, uh, self-destructive tendencies, and maybe even overwhelmed by, oh, I can't take anymore. I don't want to know this, you know, and uh, like I mentioned, when I watch TV too long, too many programs, maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe I've got an overactive crown chakra. So uh, very uh, opening, very eye-opening as I went through some of these on just myself. Oh, I could be playing that when I'm uh, overwhelmed from some too many ideas. Now, the last one, which is up above, above your head is the soul star chakra. And it is an important one. Uh, you mainly hear about the seven chakras, but I was able to find frequencies for the earth star and the soul star and, you know, cover it through those way, uh, those, uh, chakras. But if we just, you know, tried to build up your chakra system, and then we left the top one off, you'd still be unbalanced, it would, you know, leave a person uh, too unbalanced, just open. So the soul star chakra is very good to help with confusion, aloofness, spaciness, again, here's the headaches and migraines. So you have several that you could play for headaches and migraines. Uh, some people could even, you know, go on into paranoia, mental fatigue, and depression. So it could be used in several different ways. So um, that's a, a quick rundown of a few of the ideas about the chakras. And there is so much more. I'm just barely touching the surface of this. Uh, if you really are interested in it, there's classes on it. Now, I was just uh, thrilled. Um, recently, I talked to a gentleman on the, on the phone and he said that he just volunteered all his on own. And he says, yeah, I'm playing Earth Star Chakra right now, you know, playing the Earth Chakra. So I was so thrilled that somebody was using that. And um, I don't know that he had a, a testimony, but he knew and he was using it. So I uh, really appreciate when uh, 
people do try to use it for many, many ideas. Now, kind of winding down just a little bit, but we've talked about this before. Um, each crystal has its own vibrational uh, their frequency, just like the chakra. So they have figured out stones that vibrate at the same resonance as the chakra. And those could be help, they could be worn. So now you're having, you know, you could buy bracelets uh, that have that. And I mentioned that I got a pendulum the other day that had the seven, uh, just the seven uh, chakra stones on it in the correct color. So I think that's pretty fascinating. Now, don't forget if you're ever working with stones, that you need to clear those out once in a while because they're collecting energy and they are storages of energy. So they say to set them outside for eight to 10 hours in the sun. Now, I'm not a, again, I'm not a guru on that, but uh, that's what I've been told. And that's what I do to my necklaces once in a while that are uh, stone necklaces. And so this is from Cosmic Cuts. So I really thought that was a great picture to show those different colors and stones that vibrate at the same frequency as our chakras. And just to close this up, this was the closest thing I had to show you. And I'm not sure how I, I just realized <laughs> that a couple of these pictures have gotten out of line here. But what I was trying to show is that thermography has a heat and inflammation um, Im imaging system. And uh, a lady came in who had tension, headaches, and stress. And that's what we've been talking about with a lot of these chakras. So I thought it might just give you an idea. Now, she was playing the exact, uh, you know, headache and stress, PTSD. She was not playing the chakras at that point in time. But the uh, picture in the center is the one that was the first picture that we took. And you can see all the inflammation right there on that particular picture. And then 30 minutes later, I took the second picture and you can see that it had changed pretty drastically just playing those frequencies. And then the third image taken 30 minutes later shows uh, everything looking quite a bit better. So she was feeling the difference also and she gave me quite a unique testimony that her tension had drained away. Now, here's the side view of this, and voila, it's in the right positioning. So you can see the difference a little bit more obvious now. So we played the inflammation uh, frequencies and trauma, and when I looked it up, uh, in the frequency for, I have several frequencies for inflammation all tied together, but the um, one of the frequencies from the um, I think it was the throat chakra was included in this particular uh, inflammation set. And that's what I've been trying to say. These frequencies are crossing over from different uh, learning experiences and cultures around the world and thousands of years of history. So we don't need to be worried that something is a little bit different. We need to take advantage of it. We need to embrace it and we need to realize that different cultures have amazing ideas that we can be including. So I tried to include this for you on the Wave Watch. So to finish this up, you can see on the left-hand side of the screen that her um, she had a lot of red and inflammation and heat from tension, trauma, PTSD. And uh, in 30 minutes, it was decreased quite a bit. And then in the next 30 minutes or an hour total, she was looking pretty good and feeling so much better. Again, I don't have it necessarily from playing the chakras, but again, some of these frequencies are just the same. So I hope we got the points across today that there is so much to do with uh, different frequencies from different um, chakras, that we can harness very, very easily. We don't have to have our yoga mat. We don't have to be sitting in a yoga pose or a meditation pose. We can use them throughout the day in different situations that we might be working with. It's not hard to learn. If you got trouble here up in your head, you are talking about crown and uh, you know the throat chakra and the soul star. So, uh, you know, if you've got uh, digestive problems, there's uh, solar plexus, it's very easy to learn. If you're talking about um, 
you know, urinary tract infection, a great one would be the uh, root chakra. So we can think this through easily and very quickly and have another complete reason to be using the Weight Watch. Now, how often should you use it? I don't really know. We have uh, muscle testing. You could tell a little bit about muscle testing if you're good at that. And we've had several discussions on muscle testing and you might be able to figure out which one particular, you might be able to dig into it a little bit deeper and uh, even say, do I, should I uh, run this program for two hours? Should I run it for 30 minutes? Should I run it for 24? You might be able to tell that, but sorry, the Wave Watch just can't set it for three loops. You'll have to just put it on the loop, the two double arrows in the lower left-hand corner, and then do your own timing. If you have muscle tested enough to say, a specific time that you want to run a particular um, chakra. Uh, my suggestion is to reorganize them. It's going to take you three minutes really easily and put them in the um, order from the um, uh, earth chakra up to the star chakra and um, run them start to finish maybe once or twice a week. That's what I do. Thanks for coming today. I really appreciate your time. Hope to see you again. Thank you very, very much.